and apply for the our program this upcoming for this upcoming. Hi everyone, welcome. Sorry with the with the the elevator music. I had a lot of screens going on, but I'm I found myself. So um hi everyone, happy the day is today. Happy Thursday. Um thank you so much for joining us. We hope that um this will be very informative, like Abigail said. Um so let's go ahead and get started. Um we will start today's meeting today with the lamb acknowledgement, which is a formal statement that recognizes the unique an enduring relationship that exists between Indigenous peoples and their territorial practical. We acknowledge that this virtual seminar is taking place throughout the unceded territory of California, home to nearly 200 tribal nations. I acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of our various regions. The land acknowledgement is a critical step towards working with Native communities to secure meaningful partnership and inclusion in the stewardship of their cultural resources and homelands. I recognize and honor these ancestral grounds that I reside and learn upon and support the resilience and strength that all Indigenous people have shown worldwide. I am currently speaking with you from Sonar, California, which is on the traditional unceded territory of the Basenga, citizens of the Fernandeño Tatavian Band of Mission Indians. Thank you. And next slide. All right. So um, what can we expect for this next hour together? We are going to talk about what MSR is, who we are, what we do. We're going to get into the nitty gritty and then also start covering some tips and tricks for your applications. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Next slide. So who we are as the MSR team. So we are, um, as you can see, everyone here on the screen is our, our chief program officer for this year. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abigail Vidro and I am from Central California. And I'll be serving as the chief program officer in charge of student communication for this upcoming um, cohort. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Monica and I am located in North NorCal, so the Bay Area. And I'm excited to get to know everyone and see who applies this coming year. But this year I'll be serving as a chief programming officer for the mentorship team. Hey guys, my name is Amir. I'm also a chief program officer um, based in Southern California. I'm also an uh, alumni of this MSR program, all of us are, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys to help you guys get into medical school. Hi everyone, we met briefly. My name's Stephanie, I am from LA, also I'm an um, alum from the San Fernando Valley. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get to work with you all and get to know you all. Hello everyone, my name's Pedro. Uh, my camera's not working on that at the moment, so sorry about that. but. I I promise I look like that, plus or minus. Um, I'm from the Northern California area, and I'm excited to be working with everybody. Sorry about that, Pedro, but thank you for thank you to the entire team for introducing yourself. Um, but who? So basically, our first slide is who part participates in MSR. And that's where all you come in. So you will all be our participants for our MSR cohort this upcoming, um, this upcoming year. And what we look for in our MSR cohort is we're we are looking for pre-meds who need help applying for medical school for this upcoming cycle for the 2024 20, cycle. We are also looking for pre-meds who would like additional support in their application process. We look for pre-meds who would like a little bit more one-on-one -on -one mentorship with pre with other med students. We also look for pre-meds who need help with communicating their journey to medicine and also individuals who want to be a part of like-minded um, peers and also ultimately get your ap medical school application ready. So that way when the application cycle opens this next year, you are all set and ready to submit um, and so forth.
Okay, I'm going to share a little bit about, you know, our mission and values for the MSR program and Me Mentor at large. Uh, you know, one of the goals for Me Mentor and especially MSR is to improve health and education equity and improve access to healthcare and education for historically uh, underserved communities. And one of the best ways to do that is to try to increase, you know, the number of diverse uh, healthcare, you know, leaders and physicians uh, so they can, you know, go back and serve these underserved communities. Uh, you know, quick shout out, National Latino Physician Day is October 1st, buy your t-shirts. But, uh, you know, our goal is, you know, to try to lower the barriers, you know, to apply for medical school. That's always been like usually the biggest factor kind of limiting, uh, you know, underserved, uh, you know, or students from underserved communities, marginalized communities. So our mission uh, at MSR's mission is to try to help you all, you know, figure out the uh, medical school application, you know, the, the you know, best practices, uh, you know, m think more strategically and share your story so we can get more of you guys, you know, into the healthcare system uh, to better address these, uh, you know, disparities. Next slide. Uh, you can just like, yeah, press all, I'll show everything. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what do we do? Uh, we make you, or we help you get ready for medical school. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you all are, are with the uh, medical school application process, but it's a marathon. It's it's insane. It's huge. So many steps. Uh, it can get pretty crazy, and and you can go. You know, you, it's it's hard to kind of like figure it out on your own if you don't have help. And one of the uh, you know biggest obstacles that we've seen is uh, you know students don't really have those networks or those mentors to kind of help them walk them through the medical application process. So that's where we come in. Like you can think of us as like, a, you know, medical school application consultants that are here for you. Uh, so we have monthly workshops throughout the year. It's like a nine month program starting in September. We end in May, uh, you know, we have like, I wanna say maybe one workshop a month, maybe sometimes two, always on Sunday uh, mornings. Uh, we cover different, you know, topics and aspects of the medical school application. Uh, it's all led by uh, medical students who once were in your shoes and other amazing physicians and and healthcare leaders who are eager to help y'all and, you know, try to get all of you guys into medical school because it's a, you know, important mission. Um, and what we kind of pride ourselves on is we try to, you know, keep the the group sessions as small as possible, try to get you, like we, we do get you like one-on-one -on -one mentors, uh, current medical school students from all like the, you know, the, the top medical schools, or just medical schools in general, oh, they will literally, you know, guide you and mentor you all year long. If you have any questions, they're there for you. Um, you know, we, we revise your application, we revise your personal statements. You know, some of the topics of our workshops include like, you know, the timelines that you need to be aware of, how to write a compelling uh, personal statement, which once you, you know, start to familiarize yourselves with the application process, will understand it's pretty important. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, uh, 15 activities uh, section of the uh, application. You need to have uh, anywhere from three to five letters of recommendation. We help you figure out how to, you know, how to ask professors how to get those letters of recommendation. We help you figure out which schools to apply to, how to be strategic, uh, how to finance your medical education. And, you know, uh, one of the uh, things that I'm personally proud of is we do know that it's a lot. It's a, it's a huge obstacle uh, and it's easy to kind of let it, you know, like you feel like overwhelmed or sometimes you feel like you don't fit in or you don't belong, imposter syndrome. So we're, we're pretty aware of that. We've all dealt with that. And we try to also take care of that holistic part of the application, make sure like you're, you know, you're, you have your, uh, your mentors uh, to fall back on. You can come to us anytime you need to. We, we, we provide you with the tools and the, and the knowledge to kind of like overcome that. And, uh, you know, another personal favorite of mine is, you know, the mock interviews. Like we, we take care of the mock interviews. Uh, another, you know, crucial step. We're pretty good about doing that. Um, and honestly, it's like, it goes back to what I was sharing with you guys earlier. Like, you know, we're, trying to help you guys understand, uh, you know, health equity policy, the challenges being faced in some of our communities. You guys probably know better than anyone and can, you know, 
can share those experiences. Our job is to help you reflect that. We, we want you guys to present your best selves to these medical school uh, admissions committees. And that's where we help. And that's where we step in. And now I will hand it off to Pedro for the next slide. Thanks, Kumar. Um, you just click through the mall. So these are the different um, schools that will kind of be helping you throughout this journey. They'll be presenting, providing information on all the different resources that Omer was talking about. Um, so we'll be having workshops pretty much every, at least once a month, if not two times a month. And all these different programs will be providing workshops on different aspects of the medical school journey, cost, application cycle itself, um, just in general about that school itself. If you're interested in some of them, I personally really enjoyed hearing from all the different schools and just what they're about and what they're looking for. So these are great opportunities for you to learn. Let's go next slide. So the community, uh, you guys will be the community, we'll be the community, everybody here that's participating. Um, you guys will get to see each other very often, work in small groups. Um, personally, I really enjoyed the community. Um, I'm an older applicant and I work full time, so I'm not really funded by a lot of people that are like on this pre-med journey. So I felt a little bit isolated, but the MSR program really kind of brought me in with a lot of individuals that are either in the same boat or just kind of sharing that same journey because we're all in it together. We're all trying to get there. We're all trying to spread diversity in medicine. And that's something that we can provide here for you. Hi, everyone. Um, so where will the MSR program be held? So in previous years, when the MSR program first uh, started, it was held in person. But now uh, with the pandemic, uh, you know, we all went virtual. And now we've decided to keep it virtual with uh, some in-person events. But most of the programming will be held over Zoom. And we will require you, you know, to have a computer with uh, internet access and if possible, a web camera, since we want to see all of your faces. And, um, you know, we would uh, expect you to have, you know, some professional uh, business casual attire uh, on top to be presentable. And otherwise, um, we will let you know when the sessions are in person and we're hosting this um you know, depending on your region. So we have the NorCal, Central Cal, and SoCal. So we uh, plan to have some in-person events depending on your cohort. I think that's back to you, Pedro. Yeah, thank you, Monica. So when when is it gonna be happening? Um, applications are open now. Go ahead and scan the QR code and you can start filling it out unless you've already done it, perfect. Um, they're due September 8th, so that's right around the corner. Pretty much right after that, we're going to start going through all the applications and start um, sending out um, who got accepted because we're going to be pretty much starting at the end of September. So that first workshop, uh, these are all tentative workshop dates, but they're most likely going to be set in stone by now. And yeah, we're excited to get everybody to apply. We're excited to see everybody and we're excited to get the ball rolling with this, this new cycle. Yeah, like Stephanie said, the application is pretty hefty, so get on it. <laughs> that pretty much wraps up our presentation about um, the MSR application and what the programming is. So now we want to open it up to you if you have any questions about the program or the application. So feel free to raise your hand or even type it out in the in the chat box. Hi, I have a question. Um, I'm not sure if this is just kind of like an obvious question maybe everyone wants to know, but I'm definitely kind of an older candidate who's been working and I just work with a lot of people who aren't really on this field. So I'm very much feeling like isolated and I don't have a lot of support. And of course, this is a program I'd really love to be accepted into. I actually already submitted my application, um, but I was kind of wondering you know, on the base of, basis of how many people you accept, like how many applicants usually apply to the ratio of like how many are accepted do you typically find and what are you looking for in an application? 
start off, um, and then uh, the rest of the team can chime in. Madeline, Madeline. Yeah, it's Madeline. <laughs> Madeline, thank you for correcting me. Um, so I'm really glad that you're here. I'm really glad that you found this community. Um, I I feel you definitely being an older applicant, and uh, people are moving on with their lives, and we're still kind of stuck in this phase. But um, this community is definitely going to be well worth your while. But um, as far as um, how many people apply and how many people are accepted. So last year, I don't have percentages, but last year we had something like 160 to 70 applicants. And of those, we sent out 130 um, acceptances. So, and by the end of the year, we had 160. So what we are looking for is people who care, people who put in an effort. Like the, the application, like we said, is a beast. And one of the areas that like, for example, that, that I like to kind of zoom in on is when you are requested, when we request the 15 activities. If you're just like putting, you know, like say you were a researcher and you work 40 hours a week and instead of giving us a description like, I did research on, you know, whatever, whatever, include this beautiful description, right? You just say, I did research. That shows that you're not dedicated. That shows that you're like put doing the bare minimum. And so those are not the kind of people that will really contribute to our community. And they also won't get anything out of the community. Sorry. A secondary so, question. Sorry, I'm so sorry to what you just said is um from filling out the application, since I already did it, I kind of know that in terms of activities, you guys expressly said not to give a description of the activities just the hours in your position I know that we had like 10 essay questions so is that what you were referring to yeah okay. maybe I'm just confusing. making sure that made me nervous no. For a yeah no 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 thank you for thank you for asking that question because I'm sure someone else would have had the same um the same thought process that you did um but yeah I guess then it would be more towards like the the essay they're like the other impactful experiences one if you just say, I had a difficult upbringing, but you don't share anything else, well, you know, okay, that's great. So just just put an effort, and uh, if you show a need, if you show a commitment to this, then, you know, your chances are as good in it as any. Okay, and then thank you. I'll open it to the rest of the team if they want to add anything else. All right, so there's a few questions that are coming up on the chat. One of them is from Joy Eaton. So how do we find the application online? There is that QR code that we had. Maybe we can uh, go back to it. That way you can go ahead and scan that. It'll pull up the application. We'll also look for the link and share that in the chat. Um, what else? So for Eugenia, what if we don't have the 15 activities? Would we be disqualified? So, um, do you mind copying, you don't have to hop on screen, but maybe just expand on that question a little bit? Or even in the chat. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi, hello, Stephanie. So in the application, it asks for like um, to describe 15 activities. But what if we don't have those 15 activities? Like, for instance, like in my scenario, um, I did undergrad, um, then I became a mother. Um, I'm still working as a scribe. So I don't really fit into like 15 activities. Um, so that was my my question. Like if we don't have the 15 activities, would we not like qualify for um, the program? So um, your story is very unique to you. And it sounds to me like you do have experience. You are, you know, raising tiny little humans so why not talk about that why not embrace that last year one of our um cto's one of the, the leaders he um he included in his 15 activities that he was a stay at home dad so um when i applied to msr my experience i had like zero my only thing was a scribe but before that all of my experience was uh food service so I put that I worked at Starbucks, I put that I worked at Chipotle, I put that I worked at Six Flags and all the things. So like, just find a way, just put whatever experiences you have. And let's just leave it at that. Even if they don't feel feel relevant, they're your story. They brought you to this place. So you need to share it. Thank you. All right. And then checking back in. 
Um, Joanna says, I haven't taken the MCAT yet. Does this matter a lot for MSR except No, but you do need to take the MCAT before you apply. So just keep that in mind. Any other questions, y'all? This is your space, your time. We want to make it useful to you. So please. Hello. Hi. Go ahead, Mustafa. I'll go after. I have a question. Yes, I have a question regarding the MCAT. Will you guys be uh, uh, covering uh, like an MCAT review uh, session maybe or strategies for those who haven't taken the MCAT yet? Uh, I was just curious about that. Does anyone want to take it? Last chance. Can you repeat that one more time, please? Uh, my question is regarding the MCAT. It's a major part of the like medical application. Uh, and for those who haven't taken it, will you guys be like uh, holding sessions um, for those who are accepted into the program, of course, holding sessions about the MCAT or like uh, strategies on how to tackle the test or any kind of uh, sharing resources or reviews, things like that? So the, the short answer is yes. It's actually uh, one of our first workshops. We actually have alumni and medical students uh, come in and share with you what worked for them, all the resources that they used, uh, tips, study schedules, uh, you know, everything you need to know about the MCAT. And then uh, later this year, I believe we will actually have some partnering organizations or like, you know, optional workshops for you all so if anyone's interested in actually joining like an MSR MCAT workshop, we actually plan on potentially providing that this year uh, because we do realize that not some, you know, a lot of people might have already done the MCAT. Some people have not done the MCAT. So we're going to have a little bit of everything for everyone. But to answer your question, yes, we will provide you with everything you need. Uh, and that includes the MCAT. Um, and it could be anything else, you know, uh, recommendation letters, career advice, we also, uh, I just remembered, we also provide uh, clinical experience volunteering uh, opportunities. Uh, personally, that's, that's probably some of my favorites. Um, so like, yeah, literally it's 100% all encompassing. Anything you need, any questions that you have, anything that's related to the medical school process, we provide. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. So I just wanted to clarify what you mentioned again about the MCAT. It is not necessary in order to apply to your readiness program, or would you like us to have already taken the MCAT in order to apply for the readiness program? So you don't have to have uh, taken the MCAT previously. Um, that's something that's completely up to you and completely independent to everyone. Um, obviously, obviously, you will need to take it in the future because you're um, planning on applying for the next year cycle. So that's something that should be on your agenda. But as um, Omer was saying, we will have some resources. We'll have a special workshop just on the MCAT alone to kind of give you an idea of how to prep for it, how to get an, a better idea how to tackle it. Thank you so Does much. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Okay. And to add to that, just to further clarify, if you have not taken the MCAT, it will also not impact um, our decision in your acceptance. So if you have not taken it and, you know, the application is due in a, in a few weeks, so please don't try to take it before the MSR program. Um, but yeah, so if you have not taken it, then it will not impact the, your decision. But if you have taken it, then that would allow us to see, you know, where you're at and where we can, you know, help you along your journey in this coming year. Hi, Vicklari, you have a question. Hi, yeah, uh, my name is Vicklari. I actually did have a question as far as the application. So I know the beginning of the application, you guys asked like when, what cycle we plan on applying. So I kind of just recently uh, decided that I actually want to go to medical school. So I like, do you guys like favor uh, more of like people who are trying to apply this upcoming cycle?
pop in on this one. So um, priority does go to people who are going to apply 2024, but we are also a program that is for people who are um, assessing their readiness to apply. So it sounds like you fall in that camp. The only situation where someone wouldn't be um, accepted, but maybe they indicated that they want to apply at like a later time, would be if we have like so many applicants that are like gun ho about applying 2024 and we just don't have space. But historically, it has not been the case. Usually, everyone who puts in an effort and who puts in their application, they, they get accepted. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because yeah. I, I would like, I, ideally I would like to apply this upcoming cycle it's just like you guys said it's a, it's like a huge it's a huge application so I'm looking for like well like how this program like the guidance I guess you would say and yeah that's that's all I had I was like kind of nervous about that thank you yeah, of course and then um to, to piggyback off of something that you said by so our program is um it's formatted in such a way that we tackle the application bit by bit. So we're gonna like first session, we're just gonna like talk to you about the basics, the two schools that we can apply to, a DO or an MD school. And then we're gonna start going into the nitty gritty, maybe like the first hurdle, which is the MCAT. And then we'll start talking about like the, um, the personal statement. So we'll have an assignment for you after that workshop to like start thinking about getting that personal statement or like start thinking about who you want to ask for those letters of rec. So you're slowly going, like if you participate, if you actually finish the assignments, you're going to start having all of the components for your application. And then you're also going to get paired with a mentor, which is going to be either a medical student or a practicing physician. And then they're going to help you like, you know, fine tune everything. And then by the time that we're done with this program in May, the application for AMCAS is going to open. So you just need to like copy and paste everything in. You've already done the work. So this is, um, you will get out of this what you put into it. But we do we do try um, to not hold your hands, but maybe like guide you and like nudge you a little bit to start taking steps towards a complete application now. Um, I have another question. Just in terms of like, um, just because I know it seems like a lot of people are accepted and there are just a, a good amount of people in this program for the year. I was just wondering, you guys mentioned having one-on-one -on -one time with a mentor. How often would you say that we get to have that one-on-one -on -one time or the meetings with someone who works through our application with us? Yeah, so I can ju jump in. So at every... Um workshop we'll have a it's going to be a two-part workshop so at the beginning it'll be you know a formal presentation with slides talking about what that topic is and then the second half we'll have uh mentors and we'll be splitting you up into smaller groups it could be um you know a mentor with two students or it could be a mentor with like five students two to five students usually and there you can ask them you know direct questions more personal questions about what you're struggling with or what you're curious about. And the other component with the MSR program is that we'll also be pairing every student with one mentor. So you'll have a one personal mentor to you and that'll be assigned, um, I believe it'll be around December and then it'll be a longitudinal mentor. So um, you can set the, you know, the rules with your mentor, how often you want to meet or uh, how often are you both available and then they can provide you with guidance and you can send them your uh, writing pieces or you can do um, you know practice uh, interviews with them so that'll be separate but at every uh, session we'll also have mentors available where you can ask them you know one-on-one -on -one questions Thank you. Follow up question. <laughs> um, I was just wondering where exactly we get the mentors from. Are they like alums from the past from this program or from like medical students from a college or? Yeah, so we recruit mentors from all over, you know, uh, not just in California, but they are from people who have done the MSR program in the past and are now current med students. But we also have residents, fellows, attendings. And so they're all uh, people who are along their medical journey and they'll be the mentors that we're recruiting. And, you know, it'll be from universities, but also people that are already practicing physicians. That sounds awesome. Thank you.
And then also, uh, since we're virtual, um, you could have a, you could be located in NorCal and like have a mentor from uh, SoCal or one of the sessions that I did last time, uh, the physician was in Arizona. So we have mentors from all over. And now with the virtual platform, you know, it's easier to connect with the mentors, even if they're, um, you know, across the U.S. in different locations. I'm just gonna piggyback off of what everything that Monica shared um, and share a like a testimonial that we had. Um, so every year we write reports to our funders and one of um one of our mentors, he um he developed a really uh, strong relationship with his mentee. Um and he said that he would meet with her um every so often. And at the end of you know the, the this mentor and his mentee's time working together, he and his wife actually agreed to um to offer like a scholarship of sort to help her pay for her application. Um uh, it was it was a pretty significant amount. That isn't to say that this is what we can expect. Um like that's not the norm. That's not you know the, the like the bare minimum, right? But um, you will get out of it what you put into it. And so this this mentee really worked on um like cultivating that relationship, and it was something that was mutual. And so that is why um that is why that happened. So yeah, just wanted just wanted to share that. Cielo. Hi. Um, I just had a question about um, the mentor pairing process, um, because I know that with regards to letters of recommendation, although I have had the opportunity to get close to my PI and close to my science professors, I don't really have clinical experience and I don't really know doctors. Um, but I can imagine that a lot of people would want to have a doctor as their mentor, even though, of course, there's also guidance that comes from medical students as mentors. Um, so I was just wondering how that works out. I can chime in on that. So you're asking if you, so you don't have any medical, or I guess any like, you don't have a reference letter for like a medical professional? Is that what you're trying to get at or? Yes, sorry. I'm sorry if that wasn't clear. Um, yeah, I, I don't. And so I was wondering like if I guess that factors into who gets to have a mentor that is a doctor or not. Um, just because since it seems like that mentorship is a good opportunity to build a relationship, I can see it being more helpful, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure if we'd like to take that into consideration, but I do know that this is an opportunity for you to work with your mentor, whoever that may be. And if that's one of your concerns, you can bring that up because these will be medical students that have gone through the same journey that you're going through right now. So they can have additional resources and we also provide resources of where you can shadow. Um, we have a couple of clinics that we throw out there that um, if you want to volunteer at, um, which we can discuss later, but th these are opportunities for you to ask and grow with your mentor. And like, you won't have one mentor for the rest of your life. Um, personally, I have a lot of mentors that will have helped me get to where I am today. And it's never going to be just one person that's going to take you all the way to the end. You're going to have to find all kinds of mentors that can help you in all different areas. Thank you. I'll just add to what Pedro said. Basically, we kind of recognize that, you know, the people that will be applying for the MSAR program, like you don't have to have everything 100% done. Like we don't expect you to be, to have a perfect application already right now. And we also realize that everyone is, you know, at different stages of, you know, gathering their application materials. So it sounds like, for example, in your case, you want to uh, supplement your clinical uh, experience. Like Petro said, we do have some opportunities throughout the year. Uh, one of them, for example, is the Orange County Eye Project. Uh, it's a, you know, a clinical opportunity we'll provide throughout the year, uh, you know, for anyone that's interested. We will talk about that once you are in the program. 
And then uh, the other one that we have, which, you know, personally, I, I really love is we provide uh, opportunities to go help one of our uh, mentors and, you know, partnering physicians host uh, clinics in Tijuana, you know, free clinics in Tijuana. So those are just two of the opportunities that we have. But like Pedro said, like, think of uh, this MSR program. It's not just a program. It's also unlocking an entire network for you. It's an entire network of physicians and mentors. Like you will be surprised when you start meeting uh, other physicians, they're gonna know about Meme and Dora. So then it also goes back to what Stephanie said, which is honestly, I think it's the key to the entire program, the entire mindset that we want you to have for this MSR program, which is you get what you put in. So like, we're gonna provide you the opportunities, but we're not gonna come after you, hold your hand and, you know, chase you down like, hey, uh, you better go uh, ask for your other recommendation. You better go chase down this professor or email these people. Like, we're gonna tell you what you need and we're gonna give you ideas maybe. We're gonna try to help you make it as, as easy as possible. But at the end of the day, you're gonna need to step through that door or that window on your own. So what our program does is we provide you with those windows and doors of opportunity, but it's gonna be up to you guys to step into it and one of, uh, it goes back to the mission and values that I mentioned earlier. Like that's, that's kind of like what me mentor and, uh, you know, AIM and MSR, that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide you guys with the doors and windows of opportunities that students from disadvantaged backgrounds, underserved, you know, back uh, communities, marginalized communities, they usually don't get these windows and doors of opportunities. They don't have them. They don't know how to get them, how to find them. So we're going to provide you with the tools and the knowledge but it's, but it's also going to be, you know, up to you guys to take advantage of that. So, uh, you know, I can tell you right now, CLO, if that's what you're worried about, the clinical opportunities, we will provide you tons of them. And also, as a side note, you should be checking uh, the Me Mentor website, mementor.org. Check that website, uh, our forum, because we have an entire network and community of uh, physicians, nurses, PAs, so on and so forth. They're always providing opportunities for clinical experience. I keep on seeing like job postings, like maybe some of you guys can get paid to do this, you know? So uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, we can only provide you with the knowledge of these opportunities, but it's gonna be up to you guys to chase them down. And we're trying to help you, uh, like the, the, whole, the whole idea behind our MSR app is we're trying to help you develop that skill because if you can't, uh, you know, muster up the passion or the effort for the MSR application, how can you do the same for the actual medical school application, which is gonna be like a hundred times harder, you know? So uh, all I can tell you guys is if you join this program, we will help you take care of everything. So there's nothing to worry about. Just make sure you, you know, show, uh, show a lot of effort and passion. That's all it's about, effort and passion. Thank you. Sorry, I have a question just to kind of piggyback off of everything you said, Omer. I know that was very extensive. Thank you. But for something more specific, I am lucky enough to have been in a position where I actually have a lot of clinical experience because I've just been working in clinics since I left college, as well as being an EMT. But one of the big things that I feel like my application would be lacking because medical schools are so competitive now is research. Do you guys have any opportunities for research specifically? Uh, we don't have any particular opportunities that I know of for research directly. But again, this is a community that you're going to be growing with. And another thing to add to this is, as you can see, we're all from different areas, North Cal, SoCal, Central Valley. That's going to provide you with a community of people that are near you. So that's going to also open up more doors for you. Um, if there's someone that happens to be within that area, like I've met people that are from like the same town that I'm in or, and just really close by and building those connections. Maybe they know of a lab that's like maybe looking for someone to volunteer at. And then that's how you can start to kind of expand on your network and grow. And which is going to be something that's going to be pretty crucial, like in medical school and both as a physician. Thank you. And then to piggyback off of um, Pedro, even though MSR specifically doesn't have like a like a research focused component, Mi Mentor, the, the larger community that we're a part of does. So um, we are constantly um, sending out uh, as part of our programming reminders for events that are happening within the larger community. So you can definitely go there. But um, I also think like, uh, 
with, with research is something that um, you're looking for experience for, your peers are some of the best resources. Like Cielo and Madeline, y'all should like connect and see if, you know, you have any opportunities for more clinical experience. And then Madeline, like just throw it out there. Maybe there's someone that's involved in research and um, they're able to connect you there. So um, if we don't have the resources, we will connect you with someone who does. And then there was a, a good question that I um, that came up in the chat. Let me just find it. Um, it was asking us about our experience with New Mentor. And I thought that was nice. Um, so I don't know if any of the leaders want to go ahead and pick stuff that. I can go ahead and share my experience um, with the New Mentor and MSR. Um, program in general. So I was a participant in this past cohort for MSR, and I found it very beneficial. Um, like many of my peers, um, I'm a non-traditional student, meaning I didn't go to medical school right after college, and I've been working um, since then. So like it was mentioned, it's difficult sometimes to find that community of like-minded individuals who are also pursuing their careers of going into medicine. So definitely, the community was one of the biggest aspects for me in regards to the mentorship portion of it. I was lucky enough to be a part of the MCAT mentorship program where I actually got to work on one-on-one -on -one with the mentor that helped me create a study plan since I was retaking my MCATs. I had previously already taken it. They helped me create a, a realistic um, study plan for me that kind of helped me prepare me for my retake. And ultimately I ended up doing well on my MCAT and likewise my longitudinal mentor um, it was a lot of just based on her availability and my availability. And it was basically like it's been mentioned before, you get out of this program what you put into it. So the more involved you are, the more proactive you are, um, the more you get from it. Uh, but it's been very beneficial. I felt that when I hit submit on my application, uh, my actual med school application, um, I felt very prepared because of all the resources and tools that the MSR program and the mentor had provided me. I guess I can go next. So similar experience, I'm a non-traditional student. I've been out of school for like five, six years now. Um, I've been working just like Abigail for this whole time. Um, and like she said, this program really helped me prepare. So when I actually had to submit my application, because I was originally going to apply the year before that, but I, I just panicked. Everything just like was so overwhelming. And this program really laid down the foundation of how to approach this application with each workshop, each homework, Again, the amount of effort you put into it is how it's going to pay off in the end. If you put in the effort to do your 15 activities, if you put in the effort to make those little descriptions, um, to find your letters of recommendation, by the, by the time that it comes to applying, you're going to be ready. It's going to be a breeze. You're not going to be panicking. And that's one thing I found that was really helpful about this, as well as the community. Again, like I don't really interact with a lot of pre-meds and this this was nice to see other familiar faces going through the same things made me feel not alone and it was something I look forward to every Sunday. Echoing what Abigail and Pedro said, you know, I'm also a non-traditional student, so I really valued the community of just having other students that are also going through this process. You know, if I have a question, you know, I send a text to, you know, Pedro or Abigail, like, oh, what is the preview um, test that we have to do? And then we just share what our experiences are. So I really valued that being, you know, out of undergrad, not really having that community of like other students going through the application. So it's nice to build that with other students through the MSR program. And then one other thing that I wanted to share too was that I valued was that some of the presentations are hosted by, you know, people from admissions from the medical schools that out that I'm applying to. So it was nice having that uh, presentation and then also being able to ask them questions about, you know, what what the admissions people are looking for in applicants when I'm applying to. So it was nice having that resource of the people who are you know, going through and reviewing our applications and being able to ask them questions at that setting. And then that probably also helps, you know, um, now you have that connection with people who are sitting on the 
uh, admissions table. So um, being able to ask them questions and them seeing your name is very beneficial as well. I'll share my experience. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I am also a non-traditional applicant, you know, uh, I'm actually a career changer. My degree was in economics. I worked in consulting for a bit, moved over to nonprofit, realized, uh, you know, uh, I was still passionate about medicine. I did pre-med and, uh, you know, it, it, we we identify and empathize with a lot of your all as a situation, you know, uh, there's no such thing as a perfect medical school, you know, applicant or student. Like, we want you guys to embrace what makes you different, embrace your unique journey, because that's what gets you into medical school. Like, we're not you know, they don't want everyone to be the same. Uh, no, but nobody does. And a lot of times you don't realize that maybe the uncommon journeys or obstacles and adversity that you face, that makes you a better doctor. Like you can now maybe empathize better with a lot of your patients that might be, might've maybe dealt with the same obstacles and same adversity and same inequities and same disparities. So, uh, don't let that stop you from applying to medical school. Don't let that stop you from applying to the MSR program. Uh, being different is 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 great for the medical school application process. If you you know if I'm being honest, uh, we're all non-traditional. It, it's not a dirty word. So literally, just you know, don't don't you know. That's an example of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, imposter syndrome. Don't let that stop you. Don't overthink it. You belong. You're here. You guys clearly showed the first step in your passion and uh, effort. You you showed up to this Q and A session. You know, pat yourselves on the back. We can see that you care. So our, literally our goal or our, our advice to you is keep that spark going. If, if medicine is your passion, don't stop. Don't second guess yourself. Just keep on doing it. Uh, you know, we're going to do our best to try to, you know, help fill your gaps and get you into medical school. So just keep it simple. Like don't overthink it. Well, um, share my experience as well. Um, I was, I first became involved with MSR uh, a while ago, 2020, so when the Panini started, and um, it was the first time that the this program had gone virtual, and I wasn't able to finish the program. Um, I, life kind of happened, and uh, I, I just couldn't keep up, so I disappeared for a year, um, wallowed in my shame, and um then I decided that I wanted to come back and I applied to be um, one of the leaders last year and I I was not selected. I was like the third round choice, but because other people didn't um, accept the position, I was able to to come in. And um, yeah, this this uh, this space, this community has made a huge difference. Um, like I mentioned, I had no clinical, no research experience. I just had to work when I was in college. Like I couldn't not work. And if, if I I needed a paycheck and that took away opportunities for me, like going and looking for a research position or working in a lab or whatever, it just, that was my reality. And I felt really ashamed because I saw everyone around me doing that. And I, I just I couldn't, there wasn't in a way. But um yeah after after like getting involved with the leadership team then the opportunity came around for me to start working with me mentor so um i just got lucky that no one else applied to the position also and um you know like it was it was a grant that we got for the first time this was like million dollar grant and it was exciting we were i was going to have this opportunity to like create a fellowship and a summer internship and launch it from nothing and i have I had no experience doing these things, but um, Dr. Casillas, who's the president and CEO of Alliance of Medicine, um, she took a chance on me. And um, yeah, like it's it's been a growth opportunity. And like I have mentors in my bosses. Like I work with the executive director, and and she has been such a mentor for me, um, professionally, personally. So this community is wonderful, and. Um, I, you know, like I met people through MSR and like we would go hang out or go have lunch or go have drinks or go like, you know, study or like just work separately on our laptops to be together. Um, and that kind of helped with the loneliness. So uh, yeah, this community will be what you want it to be. And I was very alone before this, this, uh, this, this world kind of opened itself up to me. But um, because I, I like went 
head first and I just kept finding ways to like keep being more and more involved. Um, I've, I've gotten a lot of out of it. So um, I hope that you all do too. And then just to be mindful, oh, thank you, Steph, for sharing and everybody that shared their experience. Um, just to be mindful of the time, we do have two minutes left. So if anyone has any other questions, please raise your hand. Or if there's any questions in the chat that weren't answered, please also just verbally ask it as well. We're going to stay here as long as you know necessary if you guys have any more questions. So, you know, just let it all out right now. Now's the time to do it. No regrets. Failure, failure feels better than regrets. Just always remember that. So and then also if you all have to go um our email, email med school ready here. I'll throw that in the chat. And then uh, if you want to connect with someone specifically, let us know and we will forward that to whoever. Um, but you don't have to stay if you have to do something else, just email us and know that we will do what we can to help you. Uh, hi, I have a question. Um, it's too complicated to type. Um, so I'm working on my app and I created a separate document. Um, and then I'm working on the um, calculating my GPA, but I've been a student for a very long time. I went to community college and then to undergrad and like, it's just, it's a lot. So how do I calculate, how do I know like what the standing is for like freshman, sophomore, junior, and does that matter for this application? Or is it just, do I just need like a cumulative GPA? What is it that you're looking for for this application? You can, you know, keep it simple. So I, I guess there's two ways to answer this. When you apply to medical school, they're going to roll it all into one. But, you know, for our application purposes, you don't need to roll it all into one. So if you've done, you know, school many times, for example, maybe you've done your undergrad and then you've also done a post back separately, and then maybe you've done a master's separately. And then maybe you've done another PhD separately. You can list those GPAs separately for every individual program. You don't need to combine it into one, for, at least for our application purposes. But eventually you will have you're gonna have to do that. But we can help you figure that out in the program. So don't worry about that. Just make sure you share whatever you can and fill out the uh, MSR application to the best of your ability. Uh, and it just comes down to, like we said, effort. That's all that matters really. It's okay if your numbers aren't exact. You you don't need to like um you don't need to know what your GPA is to um apply to medical school. It's just kind of to like help you gauge where you're at and where some growth opportunities are. Um, but don't worry too much about it. Just do what you can, make sense of it how you can, and yeah. And it's okay if it's a low GPA too. We do not um count that against anyone. Medical schools also do not always, you know, hold your past against you. So like, that's kind of like the, one of the, you know, what we're trying to help you guys figure out is, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, holistic components to the application process. So don't be too hard on yourselves. Don't limit yourselves. Just, just apply. Like what, what's the worst that could happen? Just apply. Thank you so much. 